Hi guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Brie. In this video, there's gonna be a lot of art making. Um, it's pretty exciting. So the end of May and the first half of June, I just like didn't draw at all or like really make any art. I just like wasn't really feeling it. I had just finished my shop update, so I was like busy with that and packing orders. So I just didn't really make drawing a priority. Plus I was feeling kind of burnt out. So I took a break, but this week I'm back at it. And I'm feeling pretty good. I feel like I'm getting out of the art block a bit. My kitty just joined me. Uh, hi. I don't think she wants to be held right now. Isn't she cute though? When I first adopted her in September, I could only hold her like this for like two seconds. So we're making good progress. Okay, there you go. I feel like I haven't talk to you guys in a while. Uh, my last vlog was no talking. I didn't talk once. <laughs> I didn't even like realize until I was editing it that I just like never talked to the camera. I think I was feeling kind of antisocial. So my last vlog, no talking. My video before that was my studio tour, which felt just very like informative and I don't know, I wasn't just like chatting. I was just like talking about all my objects. I'm trying this new thing where every morning I start my work day by like sketching or painting or just like making art right away in the morning. I feel like it's been really good for my mindset because I'm just like accomplishing a hard task right away at the beginning of the day. And I've been liking what I've been drawing so it's been kind of just like boosting me up for the day. So that's exciting. So there's gonna be like a lot of sketching footage in this vlog and I'm also working on a new set of rugs. So in this video, you see me stretch the fabric over the frame and trace the designs onto it using a projector. And then I use my tufting gun to actually make the rugs, which is my big task for today, which you'll see me work on. That's the plan. Let's get into it. Hi, voiceover Brie here. There's kind of a lot of drawing in this video, so I thought I would answer a couple questions in a voiceover. These are a few random questions that I've just gotten in my YouTube comments and for my last Q&A, so here we go. All right, first question from Christine. What are your favorite mediums to work with? Do you prefer painting and more 2D or textiles or more hands-on 3D stuff? I would say that, to answer your second question, I definitely prefer more 2D stuff. Honestly, I feel like my brain is not built for the 3D world. <laughs> I just like to make like nice drawings and illustrations and I think putting them on rugs is just like a really cool medium. It's basically like having a print on your wall but like made out of textiles. So I really like that. I'm not really interested in making like super 3D rug stuff um, or just 3D stuff in general. I did take my first ceramics class last week actually and that was really fun. That's probably like the only kind of 3D stuff I would really get into. <laughs> Um, as far as my favorite mediums to work with, although I am technically like a rug maker first and foremost, like that's where I make most of my money, I would say that I much prefer like painting and drawing. Um, like the painting and drawing is kind of what inspires the rugs and I just really like how flowy paint is and how you kind of get results that are unexpected and I think that's really fun. So if I had to choose my favorite medium, it would probably be gouache paint and regular gouache paint, not acrylic gouache, just regular gouache. Um, specifically the Windsor & Newton brand. I also just really like drawing with pens if we're just talking about like sketchbook stuff. Yeah, honestly, I feel like I'm definitely like a mixed media person, so it's hard for me to answer this question, but I hope that is a good enough answer. All right, I just finished this little painting just to kind of warm up. I think it's kind of cute. I really enjoy doing the cat painting in gouache that I turned into the print. So maybe I'll work with gouache again and try and do some sort of like animal or landscape thing. We'll see. I did make prints of that painting if you like it and you want one. They're just $6.50, so really affordable. Thank you. 
All right, this question is from a couple months ago, but one of my patrons, Nova, on YouTube asked me a question. Well, it's not even really a question. They just said that they would love to hear more about my cats. <laughs> so I have two cats, Quincy and Edith. I've had Quincy since like 2017, since he was a little baby kitten. He's making that noise in the background right now. Hey! Um, he is a Devon Rex breed, so he's like hypoallergenic. He is the most spunky, feisty little boy. He loves to play. He's like always dirty and kind of grimy. <laughs> and he is a wild card. You never know if he's gonna be like super sweet or like bitey. Um, but you know, it keeps things interesting. He really loves to be outside, but we just put him on like a harness and leash because he would just go if he was just like let out. <laughs> One thing that you guys on YouTube probably don't know, I don't think I've talked about it at all, is that my partner and I lived in a van for two years and like traveled the country essentially. So we lived in like a cargo van, like a big van. During that trip, we brought Quincy with and he lived with us in the van. So he got to like explore and see the country with us. So we've been through a lot with him and he is almost seven years old, I believe. All right, now Edith, the snowshoe Siamese cat with the symmetrical looking face, we actually just adopted her less than a year ago. We got her last September. We actually went to this cat cafe that's a couple blocks from my house. We would always like bike and walk past the cat cafe and we'd just like see these cats looking out the window. If the cat cafe was closed, we would like go up to the window and just like look at the cats and just dream about having a second cat. And we kind of got it in our head that we needed another cat. So we decided to make an official visit to the cat cafe and we like got a latte and sat down down and just like pet all the cats and we were like interested in Edith right away. First of all, she just her markings are like so interesting. And I had seen her like staring out the window days earlier and we knew that she was part Siamese and that could be good for people who are allergic. So just tried to meet her and she seemed to really like us. She was kind of spunky. She puts Quincy in his place when she needs to and I love that for her. I'm glad that she's able to do that. I'm actually filming this the morning after we had to bring Edith to the emergency vet because she had feline asthma. I thought that maybe she was just like coughing up a hairball, but she started getting like more and more coffee and she just like was not acting herself at all. So my boyfriend came home from work and we just like brought her straight to the vet and she does indeed have feline asthma. So we're working on treating that right now. She was able to come home last night, thank God. But yeah, she's doing much, much better today. She was super lethargic yesterday and just feeling bad. But today she's like running around the house and wants all the pets and all the food. So she's doing pretty well. I guess I'll tell you a tiny bit about Edith's origin story though before she was at the cat cafe. Apparently she had been at the cat cafe from May until September. She was like the longest cat that had been there, surprisingly. She's such a sweetheart and so cute, so I don't get how that happened. But anyway, she had been there for like months. And before that, she came from a shelter where she had been dropped off because she was found like collapsed on the road, malnourished and dehydrated, and they had to like nurse her back to health. All things considered, she's doing so, so well. And I love her. I'm so glad that she's a part of our family. Do you see yourself? <laughs> Oh yeah, no, I do. Yeah. I need a day off in Kyoto. Dude, right? I need multiple days off in Kyoto. This is the little sketch I have for this frame. These two are gonna be freehand. That's why there's nothing in them. I just wanted to get them boxed in so I know the proportions.
Hi. What time is it? 2.51. Okay, cool. I'll be done with time. Yeah. Nice. Last question. This is probably all that we have time for. How did you get into tufting and making rugs? So honestly, this could really be its own video, but just to briefly, briefly talk about it. The way I got into tufting was just like a internet rabbit hole I went down. Um, a few years ago, I think the first real video I saw of tufting where I was like, wow, I want to do that was from another YouTuber, Curry Goat. I will link his handle here on YouTube. Um, he's a big YouTuber. His creations are just like really, really amazing. He's very creative. I just like really liked his designs and the fact that he could like make these rugs out of his like cool intricate designs just really really inspired me. Um, and then I kind of just got like really inspired by that and just went down like a rabbit hole of like finding every single rug tufter on the internet. <laughs> and just like seeing what they do, seeing if I wanted to do it. And I was just like entranced. And I think this was like 2019 or 2020. My partner bought me like a little punch needle kit from Amazon and I was so psyched. And I made my first little punch needle project and Basically, I just made punch needle projects for a few months. Um, so instead of using a tufting gun, it's just like each individual stitches by hand. So the rugs took me a long, long time. Um, maybe I'll put a couple rugs that I made right away at the beginning here. Um, but yeah, I just like started doing it and it just like expanded from there. So if you want more details, I can give you a longer story, but that's essentially how I got into it. All right, before I leave you guys with the rest of the video, I just wanted to say thank you so much for all the support with my shop update. I made like 40 sales, which is really good for me. So thank you so much. That was like really, really nice. Um, I was very nervous beforehand, so it felt very validating. So once again, thank you. <laughs> My shop is still currently open. Um, there's a bunch of stickers in it and some prints that are new that you should go check out. There's also a few rugs left if you're interested in that, but yeah, it'll be open for a little bit longer, so go check it out if you'd like. Alright, hi guys. So my sticker order from Sticker App just came. It's just one set of stickers I ordered. It is the June sticker for my patrons. So I do a sticker club. So for $6 a month, you can join my Patreon and you'll get an exclusive sticker in your mailbox every month. And I also do like sketchbook tours and like little blog posts and stuff. So if you're interested, you can join. But I just thought it would be fun to share with you um, the stickers. so cute! This is my sticker design. I'll take it out of the plastic. So this design is based off of something that I did in my sketchbook, which you'll see in this video. I think it turned out really cute. I quite like it. 
think it's really nice. It's a sword with a heart of barbed wire around it. I'm pretty excited about these stickers, so I will probably package these up today or tomorrow to send to my patrons. It's June 21st, so I really need to send them out soon so that it's still the month of June. So if you want this cute little sword sticker with the barbed wire, you can join my Patreon until the end of the month. And also if you join after the end of the month, this will probably be in my shop if there's extras um, in my patron shop. So it's still exclusive to patrons, but in case you miss it, you'll still be able to get this design most likely. So I figured while I was opening up mail, I would also open up this sticker mail that I got from my friend Marin. So I'm gonna open it up. She has a art shop as well. You should go check it out. Look at the cute stamps and Snoopy. I love Snoopy. Cute, she wrote me a little note, but it's private, so you don't get to see it. Cute. These are the two stickers that I got. Okay, back to work. He normally doesn't get to sleep in the bed, but he crawled in this morning and I haven't had the heart to kick him out. It's like 2 p.m. now. Good boy.